yeah, I need to take care of every uh, all all of that, and then 100%. I already have maybe 10 videos lined up. I know the subjects. I know what I'm gonna tackle. Things that nobody tackled on YouTube yet. Okay. Uh, and I want to show the people once and for all that Zero Linux is not just a distro. It's a guy contributing upstream to multiple projects and including them and uh, to shed some light on those projects. I'm including them on Zero Linux. This is how this is one of the reasons Zero Linux exists, because I want to shed some light on some projects. So, yeah. And in case nobody knows what Zero Linux is. I was going to ask you that. Uh, can you just explain that to people? Yeah, Zero Linux is not a distro, but I have to call it a distro because it's uh, like Brody before the recording said, it's easier for people to call it a distro. Mm -hmm. It's just a code of paint on top of KDE, which uh, well, uh, it's my my um, tweaks, my uh, my opinions, my uh, the, uh, I turned KDE into an, uh, a desktop environment that's easier for me to use, and I'm sharing with the world the what makes zero linux a little bit different now uh I, finally i have an answer because that question has been asked a million times is not the distro itself it's the toolkit that's included on the distro because i decided to go the uh chris type stack route mm -hmm. and create a linux utility instead of calling it linutil uh, i called it uh, slap it it's I, not slap it, it's slap it with an X. I believe the last time we talked, this was a concept that was being like thrown around, but nothing yeah. had actually been done yet. Now it's a full-on uh, toolkit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it makes it easier to configure uh, Arch Linux with KDE. Mm -hmm. And now GNOME, I forgot to mention that GNOME has joined the family. Okay. Uh, and I call it the dev spin because it's more ideal for developers. It stays out of your way, less crashes, uh, everything is stable. Opinionated, yes, but m way more stable than KDE when it comes to, to things like that. So I decided to bring GNOME into the mix and because I have a lot of developer friends who don't like KDE mm -hmm. and prefer to stick to, to GNOME. And I decided to uh, replace which wasn't easy to replace the default terminal in that uh, in GNOME to Ghosty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They don't make it easy. They don't make it. They don't make it easy. The no the non developers they want you to use whatever they ship as the terminal to use, which sucks. And they haven't decided on a terminal. That's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, they started with GNOME terminal. Well, they didn't start, but at some point they had GNOME terminal. Then they switched to GNOME console. Mm -hmm. And now they're in between. They're working on a new one. They want to include it. They don't want to include it. So I decided, what the heck? Stop Stop with that. Ghosty. Ghosty is more developer friendly. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I did that. And I included just seven extensions and tweak and some tweaks for uh, Nautilus, mm -hmm. like open as admin, compare for Melt for developers. Uh, only developer friend, uh, de developer oriented stuff. Mm -hmm. And I will not touch it anymore. The, the Zero Linux GNOME edition is and will uh, forever be what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just me making sure that everything keeps working. As far as the, as the KDE goes, no, that will receive a lot of tweaks, a lot of stuff. That's my baby. Mm -hmm. But uh, GNOME, this who whoever prefers the stability of GNOME. And there will be a third one. And that's I'm going to, leaving that as a surprise to everyone when it, uh, when the time comes. Mm -hmm. But the third and final spin will be joining the family. Mm -hmm. But Zero Linux is basically making it easier to to install Arch with KDE or GNOME mm -hmm. and the toolkit because the toolkit now with the toolkit with the help of the toolkit it's it's TUI based mm -hmm. so terminal based because I want users to learn mm -hmm. like uh, like Ike said it's all about the learning. Uh, so that way, whenever people, so whatever option they select in the toolkit, they will see the output. Mm -hmm. So if, if they have a curious mind, they will learn. They will see the output. They will see the PKG builds in case of AUR packages. I'm not expecting everyone to read because not, uh, only maybe 1% of people are curious these days. Mm -hmm. But for those 1%, if they want to learn, uh, this is a good way to to learn. I'm not. I'm no longer including any GUI based uh, tools because the GUI tools hide a lot of the a lot of this, and that is not going to teach anyone anything. So, uh, 
that way they learn. That's the whole point of Arch Linux. And I stick to the philosophy of Arch. Zero Linux is 99% close to the Arch philosophy of doing things than it is anything else. So mm -hmm. only 1% me. Uh, and using Calamaris because it's the easiest tool to use right now until something better comes along. Mm -hmm. But that's it. That's Zero Linux. I'm just a maintainer making sure everything works. And uh, I contribute upstream for sure. 100% I contribute upstream. There's a lot of tools that Zero Linux uses. Like I'm going to give an example. Uh, uh, Zero Linux KDE uses a uh, plasmoid, as they call them, called mm -hmm. App Datafire, AP. Uh, app data fire. Uh, so app data fire uh, is a little plasmoid that notifies you in case of updates and allows you to update not only AUR packages or Arch packages or flat packs, but it allows you to update plasmoids as well. Okay. I'm working with X, uh, Xcutic, his name is, uh, on GitHub, the creator of this uh, plasmoid. We worked together on an idea that I came up with not too long ago is to allow the ability to execute commands, uh, post install or pre install commands or scripts mm -hmm. using the plasmoid. That was my idea. Uh, but he is the guy who implemented it. I'm not a developer, so I just threw the idea his way and he implemented it and it works great. I, because I use Rust, now I implemented a post. Uh, install a uh, post update Rust update. So uh, after ins uh, updating everything that it supports, it runs Rust up update to update my uh, Rust uh, tool chain. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm contributing upstream as much as I can, whenever I can, wherever I can. So this I'm, I want I wanted to lay the, da this down to rest because a lot of people say, hey, you are you created a distro, but you don't. Uh, you don't uh, contribute upstream. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but I do. You don't see it, but I do. <laughs> so, not many, but I'm. Uh, I do contribute to a few projects. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I don't want to go way too long on this, but uh, that's zero Linux, and that's who I am. Mm. I think you made a, a good so, point there about like um teaching people the how to how to deal with the terminal. I feel like a a lot of I, I get why it's happening. But a lot of a lot of distros are trying to like push people away to it, more focusing on these simpler to use GUI tools. And I worry in the long run with distros doing that. Obviously, it does make things easier to use, but it's sort of the idea of as kids grew up with computers and smartphones that didn't really need to be debugged, a lot of people sort of lost that basic tech literacy. Like, if you deal with a, you know, a Windows 95 system, you're going to have blue screens, you're going to have weird crashes, you're going to have drivers that don't work. But on a modern system, things kind of just, for the most part, just work. And not having to go through the effort of diagnosing issues, I think, takes away some of the ability to, to just generally understand tech. And taking away that even basic need to use a terminal, even if it might be annoying for some, I think it it does take away some of that that learning experience you naturally get from using a Linux system. That is that is a hundred percent true, especially when uh, a lot of users, uh, when you tell, the, uh, for example, now mm. uh, there's there's a issue with uh, KDE six point three. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you noticed it, but if you uh, if you open Dolphin, I don't know if you use Dolphin as your file manager, I don't, but right if you open okay, if you if you <laughs> uh, open Dolphin and you go to show hidden folders, mm. files and folders, you're gonna notice that some folders are smaller than others. This is a an issue with Dolphin. Mm -hmm. when, when you downgrade Dolphin to a previous version, the issue goes away. We re it was reported, and I confirmed uh, the issue. Uh, on the uh, bug on the bug uh, track on KDE's mm, bug the trackers. Bugzilla, yeah, yeah, or whatever it is. The bugzilla, yeah. So uh, I'll send you a link if uh, I have yeah. the link. Uh, uh, it's in announcements. I did announce it. Bug tracker. Oh, I didn't link. <laughs> uh, I just linked to the. 
bug tracker, but not the actual issue. But anyway, it's uh, it's reported, it's confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, all you need to do is uh, downgrade Dolphin to a previous version. They haven't. The, the the developers of KDE did not reply. It's just users commenting on the thread mm -hmm. uh, for now. But uh, yeah, I'm using a previous version of Dolphin, and there's another issue where. Uh, if you full screen, it's something to do with uh, X11, mm -hmm. most probably because X11 is deprecated now, almost deprecated. But uh, when you full screen videos, movies in MPV or VLC, doesn't matter the player, the whole system starts hanging and the movie starts going at a one frame a second. Uh, I don't know if, it, if it's an X11 or K Wing issue. I reported it, no replies yet. Um. So. I've seen something similar to that. I don't know if it's the same issue. I've definitely seen issues like that on Wayland. So I'm not... Well, I'm on, I'm on X11, so I ref still refuse to use Wayland. <laughs> because well, they, hmm. uh, the Wayland developers, I, tr uh, I tend to think of them as uh, teenage brats. <laughs> because, uh, excuse me for the expression, but uh, I think the... Uh, the the what do you call it? The, the, it's the code is ready to be merged mm -hmm. for window positioning to for for Wayland to remember the window positioning, uh, mm. but they haven't merged it yet. 